Thank you for joining us for a special edition of Fox 21 News at the Broadmoor. I'm Scott Kilberry. And I'm Taylor Bishop. We are so excited to be here tonight for the Broadmoor's annual white light ceremony and to bring the magic to you watching at home. And joining us on stage is the vice president and the resident manager at the Broadmoor and Elba, and we understand that this is a little different than years past. Just a little different, but something's not different, ladies and gentlemen, and that's all of you. Can we hear it, Broadmoor friends and family? That's what's not different. What is different, ladies and gentlemen, is we have a little lighter crowd and we are sharing with our Colorado Springs community, which makes it even better. So everyone is sharing and enjoying the white light ceremony safely at home. Our theme this year is full steam ahead based on the COG. And this year is a little bit different because 2020 was a little bit different. So we are thinking positive. We are grateful for all of you for being with us. And we are most excited to be turning on the lights at the Broadmoor and keeping the spirit for Colorado Springs. Yay! To all of you. So, Anne, with this being the 35th year, let's talk about when this tradition actually started at the Broadmoor. Well, I have been here, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, 33 years of those. Ooh. And one of the first years we had a singing Christmas tree, and that was all of the managers in a tree singing Christmas carols. Not quite as exciting as it is now. <laughs> so the light ceremony has evolved, and it has evolved because we figured out we wanted a way to share with everyone who has been very loyal generations at the Broadmoor, and that is kicking off the season, turning on lights, and really having a reason to celebrate. So beginning 35 years ago, the tradition has grown and grown and grown to all of this with a lot more light bulbs and a lot more trees and a lot more of you joining us. Yes, and with that said, it is a great tradition, and there's a special reason that you started this tradition. Oh, Tell yeah. us about that. It is in partnership with the American Cancer Society, ladies and gentlemen. So when you see the ceremonial tree this season, as many of you have seen many seasons, it's in honor of those that uh, have won the battle of cancer. It's in honor of those who are fighting the battle of cancer. And sadly, the lights represent those who we have lost to cancer. So it is very near and dear to our hearts that there is a meaning and a reason behind this other than just being together, which is most important. It is also in honor of thinking of all of those who we love throughout the season and who are with us or perhaps only with us in spirit. And what are some of the most notable themes you've had over the years and your favorite? Oh, well, this year certainly has to be my <laughs> favorite, right? Full steam ahead. Let's hear it. <laughs> However, I don't know, there's been many. We have had Santa arrive by a parachute, believe it or not. Wow. Um, it wasn't a very successful landing. <laughs> there were some <laughs> landing issues there. Santa has arrived with a stagecoach over the bridge. He's arrived in a sports car. He's arrived in our old fashioned 1937 car. And he has also arrived, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, in a golf cart for our world seniors. <laughs> so that I think was one of our most special because it was kicking off our uh, senior golf. Well, we have so much to talk about and so much to look forward to in this ceremony. And thank you for joining us tonight. And thank you for hosting us tonight as well. We are honored. Thank you. So planning for the white light ceremony starts long before the holiday season. It actually takes months to plan and prepare, especially the lighting of these trees. In fact, Fox 21, Sarah Ferguson introduces us the man behind the lights and his company, Snyder Brothers Holiday Lighting. It's been a tough year for everybody, and I hope that everybody can enjoy this. While there won't be any rocking around the Christmas tree this year at the annual white light ceremony, Thomas Snyder and his team are still spreading holiday cheer. Everywhere we've gone, everyone is extremely happy and grateful to have their lights this year. Bringing sparkle to a year that's been a little dim. We love just making it as perfect as we can, and I just love being here, this is a great place. And it takes more than just a few steps to light hundreds of trees at the Broadmoor every year. We start actually, believe it or not, in the middle of summer. This is one of just 70 strands of lights that goes on each of these trees. On property, there are about 325, and each tree, it can take three to four hours to decorate. My crew, I can't 
over the years, I can't thank them enough. They've always come through and uh, I've been blessed. Hard work that brings joy to the community and Thomas's family. My mom insists on coming every, every year. <laughs> uh, she's in her 80s now and she wouldn't miss it. I'm Sarah Ferguson reporting at the Broadmoor. Merry Christmas, Colorado. For Fox 21 News. Thank you, Sarah. And with the white lights tradition, Santa is here all the way from the North Pole, and he's standing by for the lighting of all the trees on the property. Yeah, let's check in with old St. Nick as he prepares for the big countdown. Hello, ho, 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 ho. Santa here, and welcome to the Broadmoor. Every year, Mrs. Claus and I help the Broadmoor with their white light ceremony. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. What Mrs. Claus and I especially like to see is all the beautiful faces of all the children and parents and folks. But thank you for coming. Merry Christmas. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, 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 oh. Welcome back. Keeping with the Broadmoor White Lights tradition is the annual gingerbread display, which is actually put together each year by the hotel's baking and pastry team. Kind of a big deal. Joining us now is Krista Henneke. She is the public relations and communications manager here at the Broadmoor. Each year there's a different theme for the gingerbread display. What's there certainly is, and this year it is the Cog Railway, and we're so excited to unveil it. And if you've been with us, you may have seen it already. And what's really fun is the elves are all made out of chocolate. Ooh. Just a little something. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Did not know that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, it's exciting because it's newly renovated, the COG Railway. It is. Um, so can you share with us a little history of the COG? Sure, I'd love to. So, you know, construction actually began in 1889 when the Simmons Beauty Rest mogul decided there must be a better way up Pikes Peak than by mule. <laughs> so he actually built the COG. But in 1925, Spencer Penrose bought it. And he actually, Spencer Penn was also responsible for building and the, the highway up Pikes Peak. Wow. So it's really it been in the family since 1925, and we're so excited to be stewards of America's Mountains train up. And we're excited to have nine more miles of new track laid. And, and you mentioned that, a complete rebuild after 126 years. Why now? Well, you know, it, there's only so many times you can band-aid something that's 126 years old. So at some point, you need to start from scratch and refresh it completely from top to bottom. What kind of upgrades can we expect? Well, one thing are heated cars Ooh. for the winter, which is very exciting. So Stadler from Switzerland has built three new cars that are all heated and will take passengers up in the winter. We have a new snowblower, which is really exciting. Uh, we also have a new depot that's been refreshed. And of course, our partners with the city of Colorado Springs, we have a new summit house. And people can follow the progress at home as well. Sure. You, all you have to do is join us at cograilway.com and join the, the mailing list and follow us on our Instagram and Facebook page and, and see the progress. It's a lot of fun to witness the videos and to see how construction's going and it's just it's a fun way to keep up. I have to say I've driven the, the highway yeah. and I much prefer the cog. Just <laughs> right, yeah. Well we're glad you said home that right because on. many people do. They white knuckle it around those corners oh in the race, right? <laughs> right. All right, well, Krista, thank you very much. Thank for you so tonight. much. Thank you. Now, the beautiful stage tonight, decorated by Design Works, a floral studio. Now, the same company, by the way, that decorates the Broadmoor each and every year. We actually caught up with the owner of that company, the owner and designer, John Singleton himself, who says that Design Works has been decorating the hotel indoors and outdoors for 15 years, from Christmas trees to wreaths to over 700 feet of garland, Design Works really goes all out every year. Yeah, with 25 trees inside various areas at the hotel, the company puts up nearly 200,000 lights. Each tree has its own theme too, which Singleson says is part of their magic. So what we did is we took the actual decor of each of the lounges and lobbies that we have, and we would build on those colors and themes to give a signature look to the space. Then each year we go to market after the holidays and we see what's new and, and what's going to help elevate the trees and make them even look better than next year. Singleton says that they start the decorating process the first and second week of November. Takes them up until the very day of the white light ceremony for all the decorating to eventually wrap up. DesignWorks also sets up the flowers you see around the hotel and also decorates for weddings, parties and all events. The best tip that Singleton has for the decorating, he says, buy all your decor after Christmas for the next year, 
It's actually cheaper that way if you haven't found out. Also, more is not enough. Decorate it until it's overdone and then adjust from there, take down from there. Well, the annual White Lights Ceremony, also very important to local nonprofits in our area, including the Empty Stocking Fund. In fact, joining us now is Deb Mahan, the Executive Director of the Gazette Charities Foundation. Now, Deb, how many years has the Empty Stocking been in uh, existence? Yes, yeah, so in 1984, the Empty Stocking Fund started when the Gazette wrote an article in the paper about one particular family in need. And in a week's time, $45,000 poured into the paper. They helped 27 families that year, and then for the next 10 years, that's how the campaign existed. It existed as a year-end campaign to just benefit individual families in need. Then in 1994, it was decided to shift the focus of the campaign to actually fund the health and human service agencies that are on the front lines of helping our neighbors in need most. And so that's how it has existed since then. In its 37th year this year, we have now raised over the past 36 years $22 million to help 20 health and human service partner agencies in our community who serve 250,000 individuals and families a year. Wow. Wow. Yeah. wow. Now, um, how can people donate? So we have a brand new designed website this year that we would love for you to visit. It's real easy. It's emptystockingfundco for Colorado.org. Emptystockingfundco.org. You can give there by credit card, by Venmo, and PayPal this year. You can also download um, a donation form from there if you want to mail a check-in, or you can call our number, which is 719-476-1673, and our, one of our team members will take a donation right over the phone for you. Such a great program. Yeah. Deb, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you so much. You guys heard that. Let's donate. <laughs> now, as we get closer to the lighting of all the trees, Santa, he's getting ready to start the countdown, folks. Hello, boys and girls. Oh, 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 oh. Santa here every year. Mrs. Claus and I, we get the honor to come to the Broadmoor and help them with their white light ceremony. Oh, 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 oh. Now, there are over a million lights. Isn't that wonderful? And Mrs. Claus and I especially like to see all the boys and girls and the folks too. Now let's uh, hurry on over and let's help us with the light ceremony. Oh, 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 oh. With those kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be of good cheer. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's the hap happiest season of all. With those holiday greetings and gay happy meetings when friends come to Marshmallows for roasting and caroling out in the snow. There'll be scary ghost stories, and tales of the glories, Christmases long, long ago. It's the most wonderful time of the year. There'll be much mistletoeing, and hearts will be glowing when loved ones are near. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Welcome back. The annual White Lights event at the Broadmoor benefits the American Cancer Society. Right now, I am joined by Shelby McIntyre, the Community Development Manager with the American Cancer Society, to tell me about this special connection between this event and the American Cancer Society. Yeah, so like Ann said, 35 years ago, the American Cancer Society and the Broadmoor partnered together to find a way to honor our cancer survivors and our caregivers and those that we've lost to cancer through the Love Lights a Tree. Special. Now, what do the lights on the American Cancer Society tree represent? They represent all of our cancer survivors, those fighting currently, and those we've unfortunately lost to the disease. Absolutely. Where does the money raised through the Love Lights a Tree, what does that go towards? Yeah, so it supports all of our neighbors right now that are in treatment or seeking help. Um, it also goes to fund programs and services that are critical for their care. Now, Shelby, where can people find more information about the American Cancer Society and Love Lights Tree? Yeah, so go on cancer.org cancer and then 1-800-227-2345.
All right, is there anything else we should know about uh, the, the, the special connection between this event and, and, and donating to the American Cancer Society? We've been doing this for 35 years, and it's a really special event. We love coming out here, and we're so excited to see the tree lit up. Thank you so much for, for joining me up here on stage today. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate, appreciate it. it. All right, as we get closer to 6 o'clock, guys, Santa is almost ready to begin the countdown to the annual lighting event. Let's check in well with Scott. Oh, oh, oh. All right, hey, Taylor. Hi, everyone. Light all the trees here for the annual lighting of the Broadmoor, the white light ceremony. Tell us about the ceremony. How exciting is it to be part well, of this every year? Oh, it's very exciting. But every year, the Broadmoor invites Mrs. Claus and I here to the Broadmoor to help Anne do the lighting ceremony! <laughs> well, is there a favorite part about the ceremony? That you there is. I love seeing all the beautiful children here. They just make my heart burst with joy and happiness. <laughs> How about, how about you, Mrs. Claus? Is there a favorite thing that you have about this? Event? My favorite thing is when everyone comes together and puts their hearts together and just has joy. Yes, definitely. A little different this year, going virtually. A lot of people at home watching. Any message for the children and families at home watching tonight? Yes, do the right thing first! <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good message, always a good message. Now, let's get to know each of you a little better. We're going to do a little rapid-fire questioning here. A lot of times folks have wondered in the back of their mind about Santa and Mrs. Claus, so let's, let's get this underway. What's your first job? Toy maker. That, that makes sense. Okay, how about yourself, uh, Mrs. Claus, the job that you always wanted as a child? Storyteller. Very good, very good. Very good. Bam, bam, bam. A pet peeve for Santa. Oh, you have some of those older children telling younger children that I'm not real, like Jabez does. Do you know Jabez does? He's the little boy that didn't believe in Santa Claus. You should have seen his face when the fireplace was full of Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Well, let's get this underway, Santa. What do you say? I'm ready. We're gonna oh, do are, you, are we all ready? Are we going to start from 1,000? <laughs> oh, do no, it. Santa. You better start at 10, sweetheart. 10? 10? Yes. Okay. I say holiday, you say lights! Holiday! Lights! Holiday! Lights! Holiday! Lights! Okay. Ten! Nine! Eight! eight, eight seven! Six! six five, five! Four! Three! three two, two! One! one. Oh, 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 is oh, 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 isn't that beautiful? It is, my darling. Oh. Beautiful job. Thank you, Santa and Mrs. Claus. Thank You're you so very, very welcome. And thank you for letting us join you in this event this year. Oh, thank you. Merry thank Christmas, you. everyone. Thank you, Scott, and thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, Broadmoor friends and family, Woo! generational K French family in Colorado Springs. I hope this has warmed your heart. Thank you. We hey. love you. 
If you did not catch the full show, we will have this on fox21news.com. You can find it right there. Hope you have a great night and happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah.